Welcome back, welcome back, Lee Scientist, Professor McProfessor Face. I am Lee Scientist, Professor McProfessor Face. Welcome back for part two of our experiments. We are going to grow a rainbow. That's right, you heard correctly. We are going to grow our very own rainbow. You can keep for as long as you want to. To make this one, we're going to need some water soluble textures. That's very important. Some paper towel, two cups. They can be plastic or not plastic. Depends how careful you are. I'm not terribly careful, I'm a bit clumsy. So I've got plastic and some water. To get started, you need one piece of paper towel. Fold it in half so you've got a nice rectangle and then pick your colours. As I said, we're growing a rainbow, so I'm going to pick rainbow colours. Just draw in like this. And you can see what I'm doing there, a nice little fill of colour. And we'll get some orange. And you just continue your colours down the left hand side and then do it to the right hand side as well in the same order. Very important to do that step. Okay, let me continue colouring. Alright, so you can see the finished product. What we're going to do now is three quarters fill the two cups. Alright, with this next step, don't submerge the entire colour in the water just the ends will be enough and you want the end of each coloured piece of paper in a different cup. Now watch closely. This is fun. And we wait. Why and how did that happen? Let me explain a little if I can. When the water comes in contact with the paper towel, the water is drawn up through the paper fibres. As the water is drawn up through the paper fibres, it takes a bit of the texture colour with it and then dispersed further and further along the paper. Watch the water in the cup when you do this experiment. Does anything happen to it? If you leave your rainbow, sitting in the water, what, if anything, will happen to the colour? Will it get darker or lighter? Or maybe nothing will change, who knows? What happens if you use different shapes of pieces of paper or put the colours in on a different direction? Hmm. Our final experiment, we are going to explode a sandwich bag. For this craft, we will need some toilet paper, <gasps> some vinegar and some bicarb soda, a measuring cup, a Ziploc bag as well. Now this will get messy, you will need some adult supervision. Let's get started. First, we want to measure half a cup of vinegar and put it into this bag. Scientist, Professor, Mac Professor Face, can you hold this bag for me, please? Oh, and look, here she comes with a twirly. All right. You'll have to bear with me. Let me have a quarter measuring stick. Okay. Thank you. You can take a step to the side if you like now. We now need a square of toilet paper. One square. Now, we need one tablespoon of bicarb soda. I have just remembered I don't have my tablespoon measuring, so we're gonna fake it. What could possibly go wrong? And we're going to tip a one tablespoon of bicarb soda into the center of our toilet paper. Very carefully. If we make a little pocket for it, 
we can stick it in a little bit easier. What we're going to do now is head outside. Don't be scared. I haven't added the explosive ingredient yet. Come with us. Professor Lex, Professor Flex. Vinegar, please. Professor Lex, Professor Flex. Vinegar, please. Thank you. All right. Now this step is quite important. You want to ziplock your bag just a wee bit, mostly. Probably could have done this earlier. We want to make, give it a good seal, and we want to get out as much of the air as we can. All right, and then slide in your pouch of bicarb soda. Try not to spill any. You don't want to start the reaction off early. Once you've got it in there, seal it the rest of the way up. Make sure you have a good firm seal. All right, give it a shake. Watch the reaction. And there you have it, exploding sandwich bag. Why and how did that happen? When I mix the acetic acid, what we know as vinegar, and the sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, a chemical reaction happened, which produced gas and water, something we in the business like to call a little carbon dioxide, or CO2. CO2 the carbon dioxide gas takes up a lot of space and because we had this reaction occurring in a closed ziploc bag the bag puffed up and when the bag ran out of space for the gas it was still making it made the bag explode and thusly released the gas and made that rather delightful little bang if you try this one at home remember adult supervision remember safety glasses Try changing one ingredient each time you do this experiment. See if there's a different reaction or if the reaction takes longer or less time or if it changes the size of the bag. And providing there's no holes in your Ziploc bag, you can reuse the same bag over and over and over. Just empty it out and give it a little clean. It doesn't stop here. Now you can go and do your own experiments and other sciencey things at home. Try one of the experiments we've done here. See what happens if you change one or some of the things that you use. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Professor Mac Professor Face, and she's Pro Professor Mac Professor Face. Say goodbye, Professor Mac Professor Face. Goodbye. See you next time. Happy conducting. Thank <laughs> you.